Hello and welcome. Well, this evening we are looking at a subject that's been on the table several times, and indeed it has to be on the table until it leaves the table. And we're looking at a winner takes all with the consequences and effects of talency. Isn't it amazing uh, that talency, we had that talency was just the, uh, literally the, uh, the, the, the comedies, as they would say, and that the real movie was going to happen in 2016. All these parties were there, not necessarily to win or lose, but to make an impact. One to say that, ah, you see, you are governing so bad that we won. The other to say, hey, you know what, you're just complaining, but people are seeing our good governance. And the pressure and the tension and the violence, and you ask, is it worth it? But another big question which uh, Al Gungbabin asks, which I think it's, I need to ask everybody. He says that. I spend money and do a big campaign. And when I lose, you don't share my losses. But when I win, you're telling me winner takes, winner takes all? Of course I'm going to take it all if you're not going to share my losses. How are we going to govern this country so that both sides of the fence get a fair share of the cake so it doesn't become a do or die affair? I don't know, but I'm sure people will know. Uh, with me in the studio today is Ibad Ibrahim, who's a security specialist and runs for Jampo may join us later to talk in this conversation. My name is Nana Sakwa. This is PM Express, and we're going to talk about a worthwhile conversation. Don't move. Well, thank you very much for staying, and let uh, me apologize for that little, uh, what was it, national glitch, if I may say, instead of the technical glitch, I say it was a, a little national glitch, but hey, thank you very much for staying. The topic again was winner takes all and talency and matters are rising. And I'm saying that the events that went there went over our talency was to me very shameful. Because I've heard so many commentators say that, oh, Ghana has really advanced. We have moved on. We are now clever. We know how to vote and everything. But uh, Ibad, thank you very much for coming. You're most welcome. It's always humbling to have a chit chat. Yeah, anytime uh, you come on my show, I get... I get messages international locally honestly that who was that chap on your show i need to start forwarding them to you anyway you have so, to. so glad you came Same but thing. just preliminary comments on events that happened in talents here your view on. i think the events in talents were quite heart-wrenching and disappointing to every observer both domestically and internationally nana talents is not like a huge constituency like ododo dio dio or a so-called Bantama in Kumasi. It's just a sliver of an electoral area mm. where the people, the innocent people, many of them are farmers, wanted to exercise their suffrage. But unfortunately, the temperature got really high. It was made a do or die affair. All the big shots uh, buzzed themselves to the place. But unfortunately, the events that ensued were not palatable at all. So Nana, the question you ask yourself is, if we could see this magnitude of violence at a place like Talency, and how will we cope with 275 constituencies in 2016? So therefore, it doesn't paint a very good picture of us as a country. And you know so well that we are seen as a bastion of democracy. La Cote d'Ivoire goes to the polls in October. I don't know whether they can take Talency as any positive template mm. uh, to take away from us as Ghanaians. And Burkina Faso also goes to the polls in November. So however you look at it, Nana, I believe the MPP was quite hell-bent uh, on making a political statement. Mm -hmm. Now look at Dumso, look at the financial constraints in the country, so jettison the ruling party. Mm -hmm. And then this also wanted to make a point, Nana, because regardless of the challenges, the electorate still have a strong conviction that we are on the right trajectory to solve the problems of the nation. Mm -hmm. I think those were the nuances that put so much premium uh, on the election we saw at Talency. But the errant activities of groups like Azoka Boys and, and Bulga, Bulga Bulldogs and, and the invincible or invisible forces um, dented the reputation and marred the beauty of the process. Mm. And one other observation I made was the PNC uh, pulled off a, a surprise. They almost beat the MPP at mm. Talency. So that tells you that you can't write off uh, some of these you know, political parties we see as and four forces or even fifth forces mm. in the political process in the country. So all in all, I was a bit taken aback 
by the level of interest and the premium that was put on this by-election. Besides, the MP is not going to last for more than a year and a half. No. Why would Nana Dudanko Akufuado and all the other big people I'll encourage people who didn't see eye to eye with Nana on a normal day? <laughs> the whole president was there. All the big guns were there. So what was the secret with Talency? I believe fundamentally, each political party wanted to make a robust political statement that we may be down as an opposition party, but we aren't out. And the ruling party was also intent on saying that, well, there could be challenges, but we are working on overcoming those challenges. Mm -hmm. And the electorate still have a faith uh, in the itinerary we have provided them that we will work with and solve the problems of Ghana and grant them the better Ghana agenda. The amount of police and military presence, and so in the face of all this platoon and battalion, uh, you know, people are able to perpetrate all these violence. So then go back to your question that when it becomes national and you don't have that many soldiers, you know, to guard the whole country, you know, then what? Because then the stakes will be higher than Talency. Yes, yeah, certainly, Nana. And then when you look at what happened at Talency, Nana, some of us who are nonpartisan, and Nana, you know this, mm -hmm. we have no allegiance to the MPP, the NDC, or PPP, or any political party. We don't care whose ox is God, vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis the monetization of Ghana's electoral process. And everybody knows that happens, mm -hmm. both covertly and overtly. But what we are scared of and we feel will be affected uh, in the final analysis is when there is the militarization of the electoral process. Monetize it, and people go and dole out money, we, we don't really care. And then this, you go and dole out fertilizer, we don't really care. But when there is a tinge of militarization, in our electoral process, then it affects you as a chief, affects me as an ordinary Ghanaian, mm. if there is instability in the country. Mm. That is why I believe we can't, you know, treat the events of Talency with kid gloves. We should attach the needed urgency and seriousness uh, so that there is no recurrence of this when we go into the 2016 elections. And I have said time and again without mincing words, Nana, you can't form an army uh, within a state. Ghana is not a lawless country where you form a state within a state. Uh, the Police Act 350 that was passed uh, in 1970 makes it quite clear that no outfit has the mandate to provide security or execute arrests uh, except the Ghana Police Service. You can't provide security to an individual or an installation if you are not part of the interior ministry mm -hmm. of the country. So I don't understand why asymmetrical uh, groups of urchins like Azoka, uh, Invincible and Bulldogs would be given the opportunity to operate. If today they are using Molotov cocktails, uh, tomorrow what if things get out of hand and they start using IEDs or improvised explosive devices? If we could see an ambush, even though the reports from Freddie Blay are still, in, are still being scrutinized by the police, uh, it was like in Somalia. People laid an ambush and they shot at, uh, at, at cars. A convoy that was passing by. So therefore, Nana, if with such scanty weapons, People can be this violent. Such groups can be this violent. I don't know what will happen if we allow them to fester mm -hmm. uh, so that they lay hands on, you know, uh, harmful weapons. And the region, Upper East region, it's not the greater Accra region where we've enjoyed some lull uh, since 1992. Uh, it's close to Boko, volatile areas of the northern, Volta, northern part of the country. Mm -hmm. So I think the security agencies could have done a much better job of anticipating the security challenges that would come with the by-election and then confronting those challenges head on. But the you know, overwhelming number of military people we saw there, the police officers, I wonder how an old lady uh, could even move from her house to go and vote in that you know, atmosphere of intimidation. Mm. So Nana, we shouldn't militarize the process. If you say you want to pluck strategic pages from the democratic books of countries like the US and the UK, Labour, the Liberal Democrats and Conservatives uh, vote in an atmosphere of peace and tranquility. No, you drive, it's not a holiday. You're driving to work, you stop, you vote, and you carry on. Exactly. Or on your way back, or on your lunch break, you vote. Yes, but in Ghana, we consider politics as a do-or-die affair. And I believe so well that the young people that are used as cannon fodder should be given the needed awareness and education. Because if you flag a group like Azoka Boys, and young people like me do not subscribe, mm. uh, you can't have a group without a membership. So therefore, we need to you know, conscientize our young people that there are so many other ways of being successful, rather than towing the path of violence, similar to what we saw in Talency.
Let, let's, let's go back, because another thing on the table is winner takes all, therefore good governance. And we'll come back to this security uh, issue again. I mean, the, you see, the, the, the fear, is the, the, the fear of losing, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's almost not on the table for any, I mean, I don't think they even make a provision just in case we lose. We, we have to win. And so whether it's machetes, guns, shoot at the convoys, whatever it is, you need to go out there and win. Because whoever wins is going to take all the loot. And whoever loses is losing everything. I think, Nana, it boils down to our philosophy and our subculture. Mm -hmm. Even when you play a football match, Nana, you don't go with a one traffic uh, um, thinking mm -hmm. that it's going to be a win. You know that the, you know, the, the outcome can either be a win, a lose, or potentially a draw. But in a political process like ours, a regime here, and Kofi Juma, who enjoyed some time in parliament and was mayor of Accra, just could not understand why Mama Pat should beat him in the constituency where he ran for the primaries. And therefore, he went about vandalizing uh, the equipment that had been brought by the EC. Now, now this is a contest. Politics is a game. Uh, you go with ambivalence. You can either win or lose. But if you make your whole you know, livelihood uh, hinge upon politics, then that is when you can't come to terms with a loss. And look at the level of investment, Nana. If I invest about one million Ghana cities uh, to be elected a uh, member of parliament for a certain constituency, why would the opposition and the adversaries in the contest think that I would want to share power with them when I eventually win? I want to do that. Mm. Delegates have created the opportunity for us to monetize the process opening an aperture of opportunity for corruption to continue to fester. Mm. So we need to go down to the root cause of this problem. Every successful young person wants to go into politics. Everybody wants to cling to power. The NDC wants to cling to power. The MPP has been in opposition for the past eight years. And they are all desperate and frustrated and want to come back to power. Many of the people who served as ministers cannot live in the jurisdiction. They are living outside of the country. So what is the secret with this Frankenstein, you know, power that everybody wants to, you know, scrape off something from it? There needs to be a change of mentality. The, you the, can the, serve the your irony, country in other ways other than doing partisan politics. The, the, the irony is, you, know, you find MPs complain bitterly about how insufficient they are paid and everything, and yet the, the, the desperation with which they fight for this same unpaid or you know low paid job it's amazing it's like people who traveled in and to europe and america in the 80s your uncle would be there enjoying all the chill in the united states he comes home and tells you things are bad over there <laughs> but he can't spend a month in ghana <laughs> he goes back he jumps onto a plane and goes back that is the irony most of the time they tell us even though they are paid seven thousand ghana cities a month um, the deductions are so many. At the end of the day, the takeaway cannot really Constitu take them home. But they still want to be there. The if you take 7,000 a month, Nana, and you are ready to dole out 40,000 Ghana cities just to convince people to vote for you, to go back to parliament, then you can't convince young people that um, entrepreneurship is what will save them. Entrepreneurship is what will make them successful in life. Certainly, they would also want to know how the cookie, when cookies are crumbled. And therefore, every young man jumps onto the bandwagon. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to do politics. Every activist has got his own nuanced political intentions. He comes out a politician, and all of us are taken aback. Because people have created an impression that when you become an MP, it's an end in itself. But it's not a means to the end of you know, bringing national development to the people. So therefore, I need to see technocrats exude the success in the various areas or disciplines they find themselves. So that the young people we have from college, everybody does thin and Tescon in college, and after that wants to go to parliament. Mm. The other ways of Donald Trump is serving the United States in other ways. He's a, a business tycoon. There are so many other people. Bill Gates is serving philanthropically as an American, mm. and then the, you know largesse is even affecting other people of the world uh, positively. So before we can take away this zero sum game or what most Ghanaians prefer to call the winner takes all. I believe so well that, Nana, we should not make partisan politics an end in itself. Uh, should, Let's should, make other avenues attractive to the youth. Should, should the Constitution be clear and say, listen, X amount of position should be given to the, uh, the, the opposition? And uh, I hear at the IEA uh, today, uh, you know, somebody made a recommendation like, 
uh, even the justice should be given to the opposition because then you, you are scared that if your opposition is going to police you, then you, know, you sit up straight. Uh, maybe energy and stuff should go to the opposition. Uh, you know, then the question comes, as well, because they are in opposition and they also want to come to power, he's probably not going to do his job well, exactly. so you come to power. But I mean, how do you balance? No, no, I think the IEA is doing great. Yeah. Other CSOs and intellectual bodies, think tanks we have in the country are doing great. I think Afghanistan's democracy is, is an, uh, an action in progress. It's a work in progress. And I believe we should continue to fine-tune uh, the rough edges until we have an ideal uh, form of democracy for the people of this country. In addition to that, what the IEA is proposing is that the members of the National Council uh, that are seen as errand boys uh, or girls uh, to the executive uh, should be made to outlive the first tenure of every, every president. So instead of doing four years with Dramani Mahama, His Excellency, mm -hmm. they would do six years. Mm -hmm. So that way you would not be able to use them as pawns uh, to satisfy your partisan paro parochial interest mm -hmm. as a president. These are propositions, the lofty ones, that are coming from an intellectual outfit and other outfits mm -hmm. within the country. But you know, another point is, people have these wonderful ideas only when they are in opposition. When they get the opportunity <laughs> to taste power, then people will jump onto such propositions and say, oh, this is a good idea. If we get this, the energy ministry will do a great job, the finance ministry, so that we can spread the dominoes equitably, mm -hmm. so that everybody can contribute to their widow's might to the development of the country. But let them win in 2016. They come and everything changes. Mm -hmm. Their demeanor changes, the outlook changes, their approach towards policies that will bring development to the nation also changes at the end of the day. So therefore, each party is looking askance at the other party. I don't trust you. Mm. I can't keep you at post because you are going to sabotage me. Because at the end of the day, what the MPP is waiting for is that all things should go wrong with the NDC so that they can punch holes to the electorate and you know, show the weaknesses or Achilles heels within our administration so that they will be given the opportunity. Mm. They don't see themselves as partners in national development. Mm. So for as long as large parties, like the respectable parties like the NDC and the MPP who've all had their shots at par, do not trust each other. That level of mistrust uh, will make such lofty you know, propositions from the IEA and others uh, quite fly in the face of the reality on the ground. You see, one, one you know, I, I, I did a show and I said uh, uh, there were no bad politicians, but there were bad voters. Because indeed the politician has dealt his cards and has literally showed you his cards. Listen, yeah. you vote me, the next day I'll be in a luxury car, mm -hmm. I'll get my ex Gracia out, they, they, they haven't hidden it from you. Yeah. Yet, we go every day in queue and vote for them. So my question is, how do we impart or empower the average man to understand the value of the atom? I mean, how do we do it? Uh, during Tallahassee, apparently, the, yeah. uh, the political parties were selling, I don't know which party though, but they were selling accreditation. And so the media men had to go and pay eight Ghana cities to get accreditation to, to, to cover the event. Wow. Wow. So how then do we empower somebody to say, listen, value your time, don't take a fertilizer, a bicycle, a TV, mm -hmm. or 10 cities. When you yourself are paying eight cities, do you even get the opportunity to go and cover? <laughs> to go and cover, yeah, in your line of duty as a professional. Nana, I think, you know, politics in the sub-region is dictated by partisan clientele and patronage. There are certain areas of Ghana, Nana, Regardless of what happens, they are going for the NDC. Regardless of what happens, they are going for the NPP or PPP or CPP. I think we need you know, a breath of fresh air. We need to train the upcoming generation so that they will have a completely different view of politics. Many of those who are frontliners in Ghana's political process today were people who were born around Nkrumah's time. Mm. Uh, people who saw Nkrumah, saw what Nkrumah did, if anything at all, if they didn't see Nkrumah, they saw Buzia. Mm -hmm. So our generation, those of us who were born in the 80s, I believe so well that with the level of work that is being done by CSOs and practitioners like you, I believe so well that there needs to be a seismic or tectonic shift in the way we view politics, in the way we view the suffrage and franchise we exercise as you know, compatriots or people of this country. So therefore, I would go and queue, knowing so well that I'll have value for money. Mm -hmm. I'll have value for the time I've spent in queuing to vote. Uh, but, you know, most of the time, there are no electoral colleges in sub-Saharan Africa. Nanes votes 
is as valuable as the vote of the most downtrodden guy in society. Mm -hmm. And the politicians have understood that. They've understood that our illiterate outnumber uh, our literate ones. So they tell you Ghanaians have got short memory, we'll forget soon. Is it Doomso you're complaining about? I give you light for six straight months and you forget. People will come out and vote for us. But you can't treat us like animals. Mm. When well, you get people who are quite conscious about their rights, then how can people do 24 hours without electricity in a democratic country and we go to sleep unconcerned, without agitating, without sending petition to put the needed pressure on the powers that be to provide us what is our right? You go home when there is light, you become excited, as if you don't have a claim to the light, as if someone is doing you a favor. But if the electorate get to understand that we vote, because these are the goodies we are going to enjoy, as you know, bona fide people of this country, then we'll be able to hold the feet of such people to the fire of scrutiny and accountability at the end of the day. But if you are OK with 200 Ghana cities once every four years, uh, so that you sell out your integrity and dignity just to suffer for the next three years or four years. And I believe that is quite a defeatist mm. and the needed education and awareness. But my problem with the CSOs is I want to see a CSO or a think tank in Ghana that is strictly nonpartisan, mm. with no strings attached. If they want to educate the people of Talency to vote in a certain way, they're educating them not to in drift towards NPP or NDC. But when you go un underground, you realize that these C uh, CSOs that are considered pseudo-organizations that should lead us to the promised land themselves are pawns that are being used by political parties. So objectivity is the watchword. Let's get people who are committed to the national development of the country to educate the electorate why they should vote and the things they have in stock when they vote for any political party. I'm going to take a break here, and then when I come back, I want to pick up on uh, something about said being the young ones and the young generation, but they seem to have even you know practiced and doing worse than what the older generation is doing with the Atescon and Ten. And by the time they're able to choose an SRC president, they would have been to court, injunction, monies. You know, it's amazing what they go through, and these are the future leaders we are breeding. I'm going to take a break. When we come back, also we we'll go to Talency and hear some of uh, the stories that happened there. Don't move. What has been happening? You uh, said you saw these people, they are wearing uh, green the shirts. Azoka boys. The mm. Azoka boys. We don't know why. How do you know they are Azoka boys, first of all? Are they from is the, it written? Yeah, from the ISS. They, they've written Azoka uh, boys on the, the shirts. The is security men. They are okay. security. Yes. From, but from sources, we learned that they are Azoka boys. Okay. And we don't know why they are here. Mm. What, what exactly here. are they doing? They are putting what are they done? here. By doing what? By giving gunshots. They fired warning yeah. shots, so they are holding guns? Yeah. Yes. Mm. They are holding guns there. Mm. They should drive them away from the community. Why? Yeah. Really, we already have peace from this village. Mm. And if they are still living around here, getting to six to seven, when they declare the vote, it will be a problem. Mm. We don't know either they are supporting MPP or NDC. Okay. So if any of them take the seat and they are supporting that fellow, mm. it will be a problem. They will by all men fight against the other party. Okay. So they should let them leave this community and go to wherever they came from. Well, thank you very much for staying. And these are some of the uh, shocking realities of what happens uh, if we just have to leave our homes, uh, put a bit of ink on our thumb and the thumb print on the paper, wait in the evening, and then they count all the thumb prints and see who got the most damn prints? As simple as that. But in our jurisdiction, this can literally mean war. But before I go on, uh, Clifton Homes are saying that too often home buyers in Accra face the need to uh, compromise when buying a property, forced by market dynamics and unreliable suppliers to sacrifice either for location or quality in order to purchase a property they can afford. Now, Clifton Home Property presents buyers with the opportunity to own stylish, high-quality homes in central locations at competitive prices. Uh, Market-leading uh, payment plan starting from only 10% down payment. And I like things like that, only 10% down payment. And then you sit down and negotiate how we do the rest. 
all this cash down, cash down business can be never racking. <laughs> Clifton Homes strains their team to care about the details for clients, which has led uh, to a track record of uh, sellout developments and impressive records of repeat buys and referrals. Uh, Clifton Homes has launched six developments in Accra since June, January 2011, five of which are already complete and occupied with uh, the sixth development completing in 2016. And if it's only 10% down, then you definitely want to take these numbers down. It's uh, 020-467-7033. 020-467-7033. Or uh, you can visit the website at www.cliftonghana.com. Uh, offices at 34 St. J Street Airport, residential area. 10% down, that's a good idea. Put it down now. Go and negotiate hard, get a flexible payment, and get on the property ladder now because in the next five years, the same houses, you probably won't be able to even ask of the price, let alone buy. So that's a good deal that you should, you should grab onto. But just before the break, I wanted to find out with my brother. Tain and Tesco, whatever the difference is, but it's like breeding and even mastering and surpassing you know, what the uh, bosses are doing. Nana, I'll share with you a few personal experiences. Sure. I, for some time I was in Legon mm. and um, Tain and Tescon came. When you come to school early and you have potential, uh, people would make overtures to you so that you join either Tain or Tescon. Uh, people you would start school with pretty much on the same pedestal, economic pedestal, eating the same gari, going to the night market. As soon as they get any tin or Tescon position, depending upon the party that is in power, their lives change uh, suddenly. Wow. They start riding nice cars, their movements change. They don't eat at the night market anymore. No, no, they don't. They don't join us, <laughs> not at all, Nana. They don't join us at the <laughs> night market. So right from the get-go, Nana, a certain aura of opulence is created around partisan politics. Mm. So if you can taste that sweetness at that level, college level, then that would entice you to want to go for the bigger cake. The hamboni. Exactly. So therefore, I think a lot needs to be done. And we know the level of surreptitious support. Various political parties are giving various candidates when they go to the polls uh, to vie for the position of SRC. So they want to catch them young, groom them, so that they can do their bidding at the end of the day. Mm. So if we aren't safe in, in, even in schools, and there is such level of partisan polarization, then I don't know where my optimism comes from. Mm. Maybe we need a miracle. But all I know is that over time, I've seen the trend of apathy within the student body. Both K and USD talk about Legon and all that. At a point in time in Legon, about 30 students uh, both, you know, the undergraduate and graduate students, but the voter turnout could be 5,000. So only a sixth of, it, of the people believed in the political process, even at that level. So therefore, if there is such level of apathy, it means people are calling for a change in the status quo. Mm. So therefore, for as long as there's n there is the needed political change, everybody would, would want to be part of the political process. Mm. What is better than getting a nice library for your community? What is better than getting a nice KVIP? for the underprivileged in any community within the country. But there is a certain, you know, game that is being played. It comes with the baggage, the political baggage. You have to do things in a certain way. And corruption is the order of the day, quite unfortunately. So therefore, it becomes very difficult to repose so much confidence in TIN and TESCON at the college level. But I believe so well that there are so many people who are reading. We need to, you know, and pump as, ma as many books as possible that talk about political awareness and the need for there to be a change in the way we view democracy in this country. And I believe the next 30 years will bode better uh, than the past 30 years we've seen. Because, I mean, that's where the, uh, the division and the winner-takes-all business, you know, has already then started. But, you know, uh, you, well, our generation or your generation is blessed with information. And the... Uh, millions and millions and one of examples all around the world of good governance. And I mean, surely they must read and know that this manual we are using is wrong and will never work. So why don't they, as a team and as a youth and with their numbers, 
you know, conspire and come together and make that change they want to. What's the division for? Nana, social media, I thought, was, had come to salvage the situation. Um, in our time, when we were learning, um, you know, quite a number of foreign languages, during the early 2000s, when I was learning French, I had to go to the cafe with a recorder. Uh, at that time, it was difficult to access the internet. Take a few French words and go home and play back. But today, if I were to reinvent the wheel and learn another foreign language, it will be much easier mm -hmm. because I have at my disposal Facebook, Twitter, and WhatsApp. But Nana, look at the tapestry of groupings we have on social media. They are only deepening the political polarization there already is in the country. Uh, an issue crops up, the language is unsavory, it is insulting and derogatory. And then it takes one political side or the other. I thought social media was to provide us an avenue as young people. If I were doing engineering in Legon, I would get the opportunity to interact with engineering students in various colleges within Ghana. So we would share profitable ideas. But all that we use Facebook for and Instagram for is while I'm eating at Mervyn Peak, then I snap, then I share it. Or I wait for a thorny political issue to crop up, then I go lambasting either the MPP or the NDC. So the information is there, the avenues are there for us to access the information, but we are not making good use of those avenues. And all, that, all of that boils down to how we see information, how we are taught to process information, so that we are not fed hook, line, and sinker. We don't swallow everything hook, line, and sinker. Uh, for once, there can be a marked departure from what is seen as the convention, so that people will read, they will read up about various political jurisdictions in the world and want to change uh, the current you know, political system we have in the country. But the avenues are there, but unfortunately those avenues have been abused by the youth. I mean, is, is social media not a reflection of what the society is? Because, uh, I mean, MPP people would, MPP social media, NDC people, NDC social media, so you look at the social media and probably tell what the society is, you know, ra rather than the social media determining the society, the society determines what yeah, social media in itself is an inanimate tool that can be used for either constructive or destructive purposes. So for as long as we hear from the elderly in society, uh, people who are to, you know, determine the, you know, um, shape up the discourse on social media. Now, now, if very good things were happening in Parliament, everybody would want to discuss it in, on social media. We would want to rejoice in a you know, judicial justice system in the country and flaunt it so that friends we have on Facebook in other jurisdictions would envy what we have in Ghana. But there are no good stories to tell from the society. So it's all gloom and doom, only bleak stories, and young people lash onto those stories and it only deepens the rift uh, there is within the society. Let me go, let me, sorry, let me go on the phone and speak to Mohammed. Hello, Mohammed. Hello. Yes. Anna. Yes. Yes, um, I might say that uh, I really like this your program, and I thank you for bringing this uh, this uh, Ibadi Ibrahim on the program. I always like listening to him anytime he speaks. Very good. Uh, or anytime he's on the program. But I must say that this issue is not to leave us anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Because as far as there's poverty in the system, mm -hmm. there will always be Azoka boys, there will be Bamba boys, there will be a uh, Bulgar bulldog and whatever. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is that the economic situation in our country is very, very terrible. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking that I have something. I don't know if, I don't know how to get you in touch. I have something to do. If you can help me and I bring it out, I think it's a very nice idea. If you can help me, I don't know if you can speak. Sure. What, what we can, yeah. what, what we go offline, I'm sure they will take the number from... Uh, the producers will take the number and then yes, we'll, we'll get like, in touch. I, I would like to speak with you and tell you how it is so that it will help in one of these things. Mohammed, thank you very much for calling. Uh, who else do I have on the phone? So, the, 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 the issue with the youth and social media, and like I was saying, that it just tells you, you know, what, you know, what what's behind the God. They, they are feeding it. Exactly. And uh, how we change that, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a miracle on its own. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. But Nana, we look up to the elderly in society. 
And for as long as we see good things around you or about you, mm -hmm. I believe everybody would want to emulate such good examples. Mm -hmm. But if there are very few, there are very good Ghanaians out there, very mm -hmm. well accomplished people mm -hmm. uh, you can look up to for inspiration. But a chunk of those that are leading the way, unfortunately, are quite corrupt. Let me go. There are no good stories. Sorry, let me go to the phones and speak to Valentine. Hello, Valentine. Hello, sir. Yes, boss. Uh, I am Valentine, calling from West Virginia. Sorry, I'm in Baku. Talk to me. Uh, 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 I'm very, very much impressed with your co conversation. I want to thank your, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, about, about my brother yeah, here. Analysis, the security analysis, yeah, yeah. I mm -hmm. want to thank you a lot for. The, the work you are doing now, and then attitude, the, the, the general, and so far. But what, what I want to contribute is that the media, I think, they have a role in balance, and it, it, it was what they bring out. That, that is what people usually can listen. And what they don't bring out, that is what people don't you know, normally say. So I am pleased with the media. You think you think the media you think the media you, you think the media is overhyping the violence in the areas of election? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I just yeah, yeah. They, they, they must always bring out the truth, but nothing but the the truth. They should go into the issue before coming on the it, it, It's not that I am afraid because we have visited a lot of. Countries, I can speak French very, very, very well. I can speak Spanish very, very well. There's a lot of countries around. Even in this, I've ever been to the last year, this is September, this is 2002. I was there where the world is in. It started this is a lot of things. You see. So the media play a role in this environment. If you will get this in this in 2000, this is the system. All is the media. Thank well, you. Th thank you very much. It's, 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 Hello. It's a, it's a difficult one. Let me go to the phones and speak to Aposkan. Aposkan, you know, are you on the phone? You're on the line. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Let me hear your take. Uh, in fact, uh, 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 I, I said I'm calling from Abuasi. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, we really appreciate your discussion. Thank you. But I, I believe very well that the issue of... Uh, uh, violence within our uh, elections. Mm -hmm. Normally, I think that uh, there is some kind of uh, selective justice. As far as some people are calling for the uh, uh, resignation of, 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 of the, the interior minister, because some important personalities who vow for uh, even the topmost position in, in government have made such comments and went scot free. If it's to the extent that uh, some political devices try to defend such people. So in this case, if we are calling for the interior minister to resign mm -hmm. based on what he has said, automatically you know, there's, there's culture of intuitivity within the system. So calling him to resign means a, a selective uh, justice in, in the system. So I believe very well that if we want this issue to be resolved, there's a need for us to... Uh, to, to acknowledge that some political devices are very desperate to get power. That calls for all this violence. If you can recall, uh, some years back, there was this same uh, issue at uh, uh, this uh, by election, uh, uh, at Tua by election, where even the flag bearer of the MCC, Nana Kufado, I mean, used the all die to die uh, syndrome. I mean, you see, okay, I, I get you, but you see, the reason, I, I don't think any one party is more or less of it. I just find it equal. The desperation is almost equal. And then they all come out and said, it wasn't us. God knows if it was a ghost. So I, I, I don't buy that one party is more than the other. I, I feel it's equal, depending on where, where the elections are. I mean, uh, let, me, let me go to, Ch oh, have I still got you on the phone? Okay, let me speak to Charles in Takwa. Yeah, Nana, I, 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 I really enjoy your program. Thank you. And uh, I must say that uh, that young man over there is quite interesting. Uh, 
a lot of us. Thank you. But let me speak on quickly on the the Azo Cowboys and then the eruption during uh, election and sure. so on. I feel strongly that uh, the uh, political groups, local so called political groups in the Ghana mm -hmm. are rather manipulating the system so that always there will be vulnerable people in Ghana whom they can use during political times to achieve their political gains. And that must be stopped. Mm -hmm. And I really think that the media has a role to play in uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, informing, giving a much information about this issue and educating the public about the system. Because the system certainly will not work for them. Mm -hmm. And always they will, they, will be, they will fall on the vulnerable side and during political uh, election time, they will go to them, give them some piece of money, and they will follow them and do what they want for them. So I think the media has a role to play in sending out the information so that these people will be much educated so that they will not be used. Thank you. Thank you very much. And this same media, you know, due to uh, laziness and cheap publicity, we just like to follow these guys. We just like to follow these guys around because they give us cheap content, you know. So we don't want to go and read, research, and come up with anything fantastic. Just leave your cameras there. Somebody will slap someone. Hey, you have news for three hours. You know, you call his mother and say, oh, they slapped your son. Do you have anything to, do you have anything to say? Mother gives you a sound bite. Hey, that's, that's your day covered. It's, it's, it's of no fault of yours, Nana. Mm. Your merchandise as media people is information. Mm -hmm. Information is what you process and feed us. That is what you make your profit of, mm -hmm. of or you, you understand. So it's for no fault of the media. When I fixate my camera at a place and all the nasty stuff happens, you, 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 I take you, the it's, tape it's away. Christmas come early. Exactly. Let me take a break here and we'll continue mm -hmm. and find out. Because you see, it must stop. But wh where is, where's the turnaround going to be with the level of ignorance which is eating us up now? Where is the turnaround going to be? Don't move, we're coming straight back. Winner takes all and talency and... Hmm, it's, it's like on both sides. Constitution does not state clear that the president should cross carpet so the president would, you know, choose what he has to do. And then down there, we are engulfed in ignorance. And sometimes, you know, we say that, oh, it is those who have been been to school. But the graduates are even leading the charge with the ignorance. But where's, what would happen to trigger that turnaround? Uh, Nana, I think Ghana is facing a watershed moment in our political history. And any time you have shows like this one or the one else you have on Thursdays in the afternoon, when you open the phone lines, you see the level of zeal and zealotry and enthusiasm and gusto uh, coming from the young people of this country. As young people, we think we deserve better. We want to grow old in a country that is much better than we have today. So therefore, there needs to be a watershed moment. Something needs to trigger that. Why should professors be so politically blind that if the NDC or the MPP is leading us to the abyss, for as long as that is where my allegiance lies, that is the perfect thing to do. Won't we have people with conscience that would tap you on the back and say, well, I may belong here, but I think this is wrong. There needs to be a change. We need such revolutionaries uh, in this country. And elsewhere, where intellectual discourses like this have not effected the change, people have chosen the barrel of the gun to do that. So therefore, the youth of these people are a ticking time bomb. Nana, make some time and interact with people on the streets. People are just waiting for the opportunity to boil over. There are just no arms in this country. People have done the worst. So therefore, we deserve better the level of insensitivity and, and you know, uh, impunity we have in the abuse of our natural, natural, uh, national resources is too much. I am a graduate. I just completed Legon or KNUST. You've placed an embargo on employment in the past two years. I'm a teacher trainee. I used to take allowance. Now you've robbed me of that allowance. I'm a nursing trainee. You aren't paying me allowance. And utility bills are skyrocketing. Every now and then, every fortnight, there is an upward adjustment in the cost of fear. So as a young people, with all my exuberance, with no opportunity whatsoever, where do you want me to resort to uh, to seek a livelihood? How do I eke out a living? 
So therefore, if people are sitting on the wealth of the country, and in the midst of plenty, people are living in penury, it is disgusting when you see a convoy of 20 cars, Porsche cars, blaring horns, using your own taxpayers' fuel, Get out of the way and that coming. smites you in the face. So I believe, Nana, the young people of this country, we want to do it the soft way. We don't want to be Tunisia or Libya or Syria. Uh, we want our leaders to, for a moment, uh, turn their backs and listen to what the young people of this country are saying. You are churning out thousands of graduates every year, and they are unemployed. It is only in Ghana there is an association called Association of Unemployed Graduates. So the illiterate does not have a safe place to go. Even the educated one does not have a safe place to go. So therefore, the, the situation is desperate. And the earlier we cause the tweak, a positive tweak, in the way we view politics and how we disperse uh, this country's national resources, the better it will be for us. Because if push ever comes to shove, young benign people like us may come out with the animal in them. But that is not what we are calling for. Mm -hmm. It's the the uh, the this this afternoon this Thursday afternoon and you know I was saying that our our desperation to protect our political allegiance to protect my say and my share I am a Khan therefore I lead towards MPP I am Voltarian therefore I lead towards NDC has not left any political space for what you for what you are asking for. I mean, we spend too much time guarding this, this protection that I must have this party in power so I'm safe or get them out so I get a share of the cake. And so th th there isn't enough time for Nana, what you're asking. The situation for. is so terrible. Look at all the state institutions we have. If the NDC is in power, invariably you go and the head of every institution comes from a certain region. As soon as the MPP goes out of power, all those people, and these are heads of institutions, then they're asked to go home. Then MPP brings their own, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know mm -hmm. um, boogeymen uh, to fill the vacuum. So at the end of the day, we've compromised competence, we've compromised, you know, professional integrity. And for as long as you are an Akan and your allegiance is with the MPP, or you're a Voltarian, or you are a Northerner, and your allegiance is with the NDC, they tell you he's one of our stock. Uh, so people are given opportunities in society based upon their geographical location, their tribal inclination, and their partisan affiliations. And you can't build a country on such a premise. It is not tenable. So the earlier we revised our notes and reconsidered the opportunities we provide people, uh, don't judge a person by their tribe. Judge them by the content of their character. Mm. If I'm fit for the job, it doesn't matter whether the NDC or the MPP is at post. I need to be given the job. And finally, Nana, mm -hmm. on the communication of the interior minister, and mm -hmm. I'll be quite succinct yeah. with this. I think this man is a victim of circumstance. Mm -hmm. You know, in the past decade or so, media people in this country have been quite aggressive in pursuit of accountability. Mm -hmm. So in the spare of the moment, uh, as soon as something happens, they give you a call and they would want you to give answers to certain <laughs> questions. Mm -hmm. And the one who interviewed him, interviewed me immediately after he granted that interview. He's with Ultimate FM in mm -hmm. Kumasi now. He was with yes, Multimedia. Yes, yes, one, so, one of my kid brothers. Yeah, so if you saw the way Prince was pushing the interior minister to as much as possible eke out all the answers you could get from him, I think the minister went overboard. Mm -hmm. And this is where I would stand and say, if the interior ministry has got a PR department, there is no need for the minister to jump onto a radio station or a TV station to explain government policies all the time. Mm -hmm. The national security coordinator, the former one, lost his job to a large extent as a result of the miscommunication he had with the press. Mm -hmm. The just passed you know, youth and sports minister also lost his job mm -hmm. because he told the press man he wasn't accountable to him. Mm -hmm. So why don't you let the PR professionals that have been duly employed in these ministries and do paid. the work and get paid for the work? But we live in a country where those with the loudest mouth are seen to be doing the work. So he's a minister, you call him at 6 a.m., he wants to be on radio. <laughs> so therefore, I think when talency was happening and things were unraveling uh, before our own eyes, I think the interior minister could have taken his time to, you know, collect the needed information and communicate well with the press. Thank you very much. I wish there was more time. I wish there was more time to deal with this issue because that's a whole issue on its own. But let me say thank you very much to Tanti's fashion who... Uh, so the shirts for me for uh, the show and they are on 024366
0201-024-366-2001. Give Tantiza a call and get yourself a nice Ghana-made shirt. But thank you very much to my brother Ibad. And you know what? Tomorrow we'll be back to do this all over again. Thank you very much for watching. But thank you so much. You're most welcome. It's, it's always it. a pleasure. It is. And you have to have a regular slot on this show. My, my listeners like you. My watch viewers also like you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you.